Hello, and welcome to the weekly sermon podcast with Rev. Marie Duquette. You can find the full live version service on YouTube's Be Ye Lifted. I'm going to start today with a reading from Revelation 21 from the Grown Up Bible. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. John, the spiritual dreamer here, wrote, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. In the Bible, there is no more potent metaphor for chaos and trouble than the sea. The waters rage and foam. Tumultuous waves crash into the shore. In the Bible, the sea is a dangerous place to be. Ask Jonah, who took a ship for Nineveh and ended up in the belly of a fish. Ask Paul, who shipwrecked in the Mediterranean Sea more than once. Ask the Egyptians who were swallowed up by the sea chasing after their fleeing slaves. Ask the people of Fort Myers, Florida, New Orleans, Indonesia, or Japan about the chaos the ocean can bring. In the Bible, the sea can mean disorder and death. In the Bible's last book, the book of Revelation, from which I just read, the mythic beast rises from the sea and ends up dead in a lake of fire. In the Bible, the sea is no place to be. The Hebrew Bible has a special word for the watery chaos. In Hebrew, the word is toho vaboho. And yes, because I said it, you must say it. Please repeat after me. Toho, vaboho. See? Say it the way Steve says it. What, Steve? Vabohu. Toho, vabohu. You do not need to know Hebrew, although it helps. know what that means. It's biblical onomatopoeia. It sounds like trouble. It is watery chaos and catastrophe, even when the waters are calm. The toho, babohu, <laughs> lurks near the surface. Merrily, you row along, the water seems fine. You've got life figured out. Perhaps you think your ship has finally come in. Then comes the 3 a.m. phone call. It's Toho Vabahu on the line. Another day, you tell the doctor, but I feel fine. But on the x-ray, even you can see the cancerous chaos. And it's not only the big stuff, but the daily dose, too. The constant anxiety. The insistent waiting for the other shoe to drop. The nagging feeling that something's not quite right. The expectation 
that a loved one is getting better only to find out, no, not yet. It's always there seeping out. And if you don't manage it before long, you might be well up to your eyeballs in Toho Vabahu. That too would be watery chaos when our tears either come too much, too strong for too long, or won't quite make it past our eyelids. Watery chaos takes many forms. And the thing is, this is never a case of if, but when. Ask the saints whose memories we honor this morning. They stepped in their share of the Toho Vabahu, for better or worse. Some maintained a stiff upper lip because that's who they were. Some cried when others were not looking because that's who they were. Most did what most do, tried to keep their rickety raft afloat on the churning sea, trusting that somehow, some way, God's going to find a way to get us through to dry land and safe harbor. And if you are here today, considering everything that has happened in the last three years, God has done that for you. So, how is your boat floating today? If it's like mine, not everything is exactly ship shape. My sails need trimmed. I have way too many barnacles on my hull. <laughs> and while things are going reasonably well, I keep one eye on the color of the horizon. Pause. Did anyone look at the horizon at sunset last night? Wasn't it stunning? Uh, oh, it was stunning. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky at morning, sailor's warning. The chaos is never very far away. I had a lady in my previous congregation who thought she was just being funny when she filled out the county's 911 response form. The question, do you have any condition about which we should be aware? She wrote, I'm old. Anything can happen. <laughs> Six weeks later, she was told she had ovarian cancer, with, and three months after that, she was gone. Before she died, she told me, and I quote, I should never have filled out that damn form. <laughs> what to do? Pray. Of course we pray. A small group of us has been praying for people in this congregation several times a week, every morning at 9 o'clock morning prayer. We pray for health and wholeness and prosperity. We pray for calm or weather, that the storm might cease, and sometimes that does happen, except for when it doesn't. Don't you think the people in Ukraine have been praying hard all year and us along with them? War came crashing ashore nonetheless. So we pray and then we start bailing water. Use anything you can find, buckets, milk jugs, pop cans, empty prescription bottles, anything that will keep the ship afloat. Some of us eat <laughs> chocolate therapy, apple pie, nachos. I miss dinner. We eat because feeling out of control and feeling hungry is a little too much, and there's only one that we can um, address ourselves. Some people light up. Some drink up. Some shrivel up. Some, in a panic, start throwing things overboard that you wanted and you needed. And then an argument ensues which at least distracts you from the overall anxiety of the uncontrollable, of coping with the toho vabahu. It's a great Halloween word, isn't it? It's scary. In the midst of the chaos, you might say you cannot see the forest for the trees. 
you cannot see which, is, which end is up, and many other cliches, but mostly you cannot see that there is someone in the boat with you. He is the quiet guy back in the stern, and you hardly ever hear a word out of him. There's someone in our rickety raft with us, and he's got a bucket, and he's bailing water too. He seems calm and sure, kind of like he's been through this before. We do not sail through chaos alone. John, the writer of Revelation, puts it this way. The home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God will dwell with them. God is in the boat. That is the promise of Christ. I know we would much prefer it to work some other way. For God to simply calm the storm why won't Jesus drop the bailing bucket and command the Toho Vabahu to be still? Why not just still the storm and spare us all the excitement? The short answer is, I don't know. We don't know. I know some say differently. All you have to do is pray harder, believe harder, give more, and peace will follow. Buy this book. Pray this prayer. Think positive. I don't know. I do know that it has never worked that way for me. And I suspect it has not worked that way for many of you either, no matter how many Christians might tell you so. Seldom are we given away around the storm. Few are the times that we are just given a pass. But that is not the gospel promise. The gospel promise is that we're in the boat together. You, me, Jesus, God, all of us in the same boat, fighting our way through today's Toho Vabahu. The gospel promise is that we will find a way through it one way or another. Some t someday the promise of revelation will be fulfilled. In John's dream, he sees a time when the Toho Vabahu evaporates in a heavenly scene. The tears will be wiped away from every eye. Death will be no more. Mourning and pain will be gone. Isaiah, the prophet, sees the same vision. The shroud of death and chaos will be removed. The sea, says John, will be no more. Someday, but not yet. Now. We bail water, we hold on to faith, we pray that we will not be swamped by it all. We are grateful that we have company, and we believe we will be brought through the churning sea. I've always found it both interesting and enlightening that the church has turned water from a symbol of the chaos of death into a sacrament of life. Think about it. Here we take a tiny bit of the Toho Vabahu and let God use it to bind us to the holy promise. There is nothing that can come between you and God. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing that can keep the Spirit of God from raising you up from your lowest point Nothing. Today we pay the Toho Vabahu its due, and then we take a little bit of its energy, and we repurpose it to help us look ahead to that time and place when the sea will be no more, when we shall gather at the river of life with all the saints, happy and humbled to be at the feet of the one who is making all things new. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and relinquished his spirit. Then look, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom in two, and the earth was shaken and the rocks were split, and the tombs were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Then after his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were standing guard over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, 
This man was God's son. And there were many women there from a distance watching. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had ministered to him. Among them were Mary the Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. This is the gospel of the Lord. You just heard from Reverend Marie Duquette, pastor at King of Kings in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You can help support this ministry by texting your contribution to 833-950-1405. That's the U.S. 833-950-1405. You can find the full service video on YouTube Live at Be You Lifted. Drop us a comment or join us on live chat at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sunday mornings.